Welcome back everyone to episode 15 of Tahmid Talks, the Money Talks series. Now, sadly, this will be the second last episode of this series. Sniff sniff tear. But I hope you don't miss me too much because I will be posting other series on this Tahmid Talks uh, channel. So make sure you subscribe so you're up to date with all the dank content. That being said, the topic for today is debt management, so let's get right into it. As you probably know, being in debt sucks. It means that you have money that you owe to other people. It could be the bank, it could be a friend, it could be the loan shark down the street, but hopefully you're not in that situation. And being in debt, owing money really sucks because all the money you're making and working hard for ends up going to your debtor who owns the loan that they gave to you. For example, a lot of us, we work and a lot of that money ends up going to the bank in the form of mortgages. And if you tried skipping a mortgage payment before, you would know there's repercussions and the consequences of doing so. So those that own your debt, they'll find a way to recollect or collect it. So all that being said, the easy solution is if you can afford to is not get in debt. But at the same time, we should know that there's two types of debt really. One is good debt and the other is bad debt. Now you might be thinking, hold up, what type of debt is uh, good debt? Well, a lot of people borrow money in order to make more money. And if you borrow debt smartly, you can use leverage, which I've talked about in the past, in order to make your money make even more money. An example of good debt possibly, if done well, would be student loans. Now a lot of people my age, they have a lot of student loans, um, but sometimes the degree they may have gotten might not be very marketable and you would have a hard time getting a job with that degree. But let's say you paid a good price for your degree and you're going to get a good job. You'll make many times your money over your lifetime just from those student loans. I know personally for me, when I went off to university, I was comparing tuitions left and right to make sure I was getting the best deal. And I even looked at the academic handbooks where they had like the salaries of graduates and all these other factors. And then I ended up on YouTube making YouTube videos about finance for all of you. So it all came full circles and it's working out great. But in all seriousness, make sure that you do your research, check the numbers and make sure that your student loans will amount to something. And I'm not saying that you should get a degree just for the sole purpose of making big bucks, but find something that you actually would be able to enjoy or at least bear doing. There's no point of being rich and miserable at the same time. I should throw it in that my next episode will be on student loans. Um, so that's a must watch if you do hold student loans. That will be next week. Another form of good debt that we're all familiar with is the mortgage. And that's because usually over time house prices, they do appreciate fancy word for they go up and the money that you're putting into the mortgage, you can recoup some of it, if not more than what you paid along with the expenses of carrying costs of having a house and all that, which I've explained in depth in past episodes on real estate. So there you go. In summary, a good debt is any sort of borrowing of money, which can help you make more money by the borrowing over a longer term. So the idea here is we're taking short term pain in order for long term gain. Hold up. Let me say that again. It sounded good. We're taking short-term pain for long-term gain. But let's come back to the unwanted step cousin, bad debt. Bad debt is when you're borrowing money to lose some more money on top. A serious example, car loans. I know a lot of dude or even girls my age who start getting a paycheck. First thing they'll do is go out and find a very nice BMW and buy that. Your first few paychecks shouldn't be going to a luxury car. The reason for that is the auto loan, the financing, or the lease is a really, really bad debt. 
Not only does the car lose 20-30% of its value as soon as you buy it, but you're carrying the loan with interest, which is more money you're losing on top. So hey, if you like BMWs and you like making the bank rich, then for sure you can take up an auto loan. Or I should add making the car company rich as well because not all auto loans are through the bank. Another example of bad debt would be borrowing money from your cousin Larry in order to gamble it on PokerStars.net, not sponsored. Um, and yes, yeah, spending it on gambling in order or in hopes of making back big bags. But in the end, you'll most likely lose it all and you'll still owe Larry that money back. That's not a situation you would want to be in. Also, there are very bad types of debt with very high interest rates that you always, always want to avoid. I cannot stress it enough. I've talked about it in the past. I'll talk about it again. You want to avoid very high interest debts such as credit cards, loan sharks, cash money, uh, advance payments, payday loans, or whatever you call it. Uh, in the hood that you live in but the hood is filled with these loan sharks and they're out to get you and keep you broke the last little tip is obviously as you may have figured out is you want more of good debt and less of bad debt so you can keep getting richer but the last tip is sometimes there's options uh, to roll bad debt into good debt so for example some kids they borrow money from family relatives to pay off student loans and then get uh, more generous terms with your family member hopefully uh, you have a rich uncle who really likes you that will do that for you but you'll be paying it back at more generous terms so saving the cost of that interest payment the other common one is people will take high interest credit card debt and roll that over into a personal line of credit with the bank which is something you can talk to your financial advisor or talk to your bank about so these are all good debt management practices that you can keep in mind last point i want to touch on some people ask well should i invest or pay off my debt first it really depends in most cases paying off debt does win so please do that first but if your debt is ultra low interest which can be the case given how of a low interest environment we're currently in so let's say your interest is very low like a 2.5 percent interest rate you're paying and you believe by investing you can make five six percent annually instead of the 2.5 percent or whatever you're paying on your debt then it might make sense to go the route of investing as opposed to paying off the debt but keep in mind that when you pay off debt that's a guaranteed return that means if my debt was interest accumulating interest at six percent then I pay off that debt, whatever, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars. That means I made a guaranteed 6% return on that amount of money by paying off that debt. If I put it into the stock market instead, there's no guaranteed return because obviously you have to take risk in order to get a return. So yeah, bottom line, in most cases, it makes sense to pay off debt and then worry about investing. And just a side tip, just because you're paying off debt doesn't mean that you shouldn't have an emergency fund for emergencies because emergencies are one of the main reasons that people go into debt in the first place. That's why all financial advisors tell you to get an emergency fund first. Save a couple grand on the side so you don't have to go into debt when an emergency occurs. All that being said, um, thank you. For joining and staying for episode um, 15 the second last episode of the money talk series i hope to see you all right here next week for the final installment episode 16 on student loans peace for now